Two new things in this video. The cutting mat as a background and the recently released multimeter that I bought from AliExpress for around $15. I didn't get this because I thought this was the best multimeter, but I think this is representing the new generation of cheaper multimeters. Packing a nice amount of features in a price that is affordable for beginners that are targeting their first multimeters. The manual has all the information that is available on the internet, and even though the leads feel cheap, and I would prefer leads from, for example, Pomona, they are still okay for a start if one can't afford getting higher quality ones. So the meter itself, this is Rich Meter 101, but there are at least a dozen different names for this meter on the internet. I'll put some of them on the description. You may already have noticed the resemblance of this multimeter and the Fluke 101. This rich meter has current measurement and three input jacks, and they are on the front. As with the Fluke, there are only two input jacks, and they are on the bottom of the meter. Another thing that is better on the rich meter is the size of the display. The numbers are much bigger on the rich meter than on the Fluke, but the viewing angles are much worse. It's really hard to capture it on the video, but I think you can see enough that the reading on the rich meter disappears much quicker. Then again some negative things about rich meter. The layout of the selector switch. Resistance, continuity, diode and capacitance are on one position, while Fluke has the capacitance on another position. And speaking of selector switch, the Fluke has really good one. It's hard to accidentally leave the selector switch in between the positions, but with the rich meter, that is more than likely to happen at some point. Then there is this feature that can cause accidents. The off position on both ends of the selector switch. You have to go through the current measurement mode, which will connect low resistance between the input jacks. It's not dead short, but still much lower resistance than voltage modes input resistance. If you have seen my teardown of the Fluke 101, you know it has pretty good internals, very safe compared to other multimeters on the same price range. But let's have a quick look what this rich meter has inside. This won't be a comprehensive teardown, but a quick look inside. There are screws on the corners of the meter, and once they have been unscrewed, we can finally take a look. Now there actually is battery cover and it has its own screw so you don't have to take apart the whole meter just to change these two AAA batteries. And the first good thing we can see just above input jacks on both sides there are two fuses. They are unfortunately these super tiny ones smaller than the small glass tubes inside the other cheap multimeters. And here's the evidence that I have taken this multimeter apart before. I put some hot glue on the beeper like I always do. And here are some modification ideas. For example, here's place for a button for selecting the range manually. And another modification is a big one. The main IC is a well-known one. And all the configuration is on the EE prom, which can be modified quite easily to have, for example, longer backlog timeout or out power off delays. There isn't much on the input protection side, but overall this PCB is a little bit higher quality than I thought it would be. Of course, considering the 10 to 15 dollar price range. So, okay, there wasn't any big faulty soldering joints or anything like that, so let's put this back together. And then I can perform a couple of brief tests to see if this actually works. So, let's first test voltage reading of two of my voltage references 2.048 volts and 10 volts. Both the Fluke 101 and the Rich Meter 101 are connected to the same leads, and as you can see, the Time from contact to actually getting the reading is about the same with both meters and difference on the reading is just two counts off, so they are basically showing the same reading, at least at the moment on the room temperature. Of course the accuracy over time or on different environments is not guaranteed. So on the voltage mode I'm quite happy with the results, so let's test the speed of the resistance measurement from over the limit to zero ohms. This is not as fast as, for example, with Fluke 101, but not the slowest one either. I wouldn't call that fast, but I would give it the pass. That's not a deal breaker. Another speed that can be a deal breaker for some is the continuity test. I think this has pretty good continuity test. I don't hear any delays. At least with these gold-plated leads that I took for this test, these didn't come with the meter. So, some kind of verdict or summary. 
So this has the current mode, which Fluke 101 didn't have. There's a selector switch is not good, it can be placed in between of the modes, but the display has big numbers and a backlight, which are both improvements over the Fluke 101. But general build quality or feel of the case is lower than the Fluke's, and Fluke has better input protection, which may be important for some, but if it's not requirement, the Rich Meter 101 is still a good meter, considering it's half the price of the Fluke. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below.